Welcome to Santa Barbara. One of the best views we've ever seen. Right at the beach. Just a little bit north, probably like an hour and a half north of LA. We drove up here yesterday because it was raining in LA, but yeah. it wasn't raining up here. Right. And that's like the best thing about living in a van is that you can just hop in the car, Go drive to where the want. good weather is. That's right, that's right. And now we're here. And we got a spicy one for you today. We have a very spicy one for you Like today. this hot sauce that Kaylee's been giving me. <laughs> She's been giving me this habanero hot sauce and my mouth is still on fire. Yeah, might be giving it a little bit too much to him on purpose. A little too much. <laughs> but today we're gonna be talking about travel cameras and what the best travel camera is for both video, mm -hmm. like what we're doing right now, right. and for photos. Yeah. Now you might be saying, I've seen some of your photos and they're, not and they're pretty really mediocre. But <laughs> We have a very special guest with us today and has been spending the last couple days with us. We called in a professional <laughs> and her name is... Here I am! <laughs> click, click! <laughs> I'm super profesh. <laughs> Wait, but you actually have to tell them who you are. Okay, hey guys, I'm Kendall. I'm a professional traveling wedding photographer. So I'm based out of Springfield, Missouri, and I travel the country taking pictures for couples. And no, this is not a hint that Jor and I are getting married. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and she also just bought a van. What kind of van you got? Yeah, it's a 2017 Ford Transit. So I'm converting it right now. Today, she's gonna be talking about everything photo. We're gonna be talking about everything video. We're gonna talk about video first. We have a huge lineup of cameras. We got a Lumix GH5, a Canon M50, an iPhone 10, a Canon G7X Mark II, and a Canon 5D Mark III. So something about cameras is they're super personal. So the brand that you choose, the type of camera that you use, it so much comes down to what you like, the settings that you like, how the camera functions, how the camera looks. So there's nothing wrong if you like the way a Canon looks or a Nikon or a Sony. Personally, between us and Kindle, we both love how a Canon looks. We love the color science. We love how easy, we love how easy the menu is to use. And because of a few other reasons, that's why we mostly go with Canon, except for this Lumix. But to break down what we think is the best travel camera, we're gonna use five different categories. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is quality of the image. And to do that, we're gonna do a little montage using each camera, only about a 10 or 15 second montage of Lola and Kaylee modeling for us on this beach. So the first camera we're gonna talk about is the Lumix GH5. And there's two things that this camera does really, really well. The first is image stabilization. So you'll see how smooth this image is. And that's because there's two stabilizers. There's one in the lens and there's one in the camera. So all these handheld shots come out really smooth. And then the second thing I like about this camera is the quality of the image. And something that the Lumix allows you to do is shoot in a raw format or a log format. And then you can do something like this. So you can see the color correction coming across the screen. And because it shoots in a log format, it gives you more flexibility to edit the image in post. All right, now we're gonna look at the Canon M50. And I think you'll see right away the step down in the image quality versus the Lumix GH5. The one thing I do like about this camera is it shoots in 120 frames a second, which gives it a really smooth and buttery feel. And that makes up for the lack of stabilizers in the camera. So if you're not doing slow-mo and you're filming in a traditional 24 frames a second, then you're gonna get a lot of camera shake. Next, we're gonna look at the iPhone. And I think this camera is really impressive. I think both the video quality and the stabilization is awesome. Mostly the stabilization comes from being able to film in 120 frames a second. You can even bump it up to 240 frames a second if you'd like. But where this camera falls short is you really have no flexibility. So you'll see we lose all the bokeh, which is that softness in the background, and basically everything's in focus. And that's because we can't control the f-stop, we can't control the shutter speed, we can't control the ISO. And also you really lose a lot of control over changing focus in the middle of a shot. So you really can't rack focus, which is starting the focus in the foreground and moving it to the background. With the iPhone, it's basically impossible. Next up is the Canon 5D Mark III, and I think you'll notice how nice of an image this has, but you'll also notice how shaky it is. So there's no stabilizer in this camera, and it also only films in 60 frames a second, so it's not as smooth as the past three, and you can really notice that right away. When doing video, this camera needs to be fully manual, so you need to control everything. For doing handheld shots like this, this camera really isn't ideal because the monitor, the screen on it, is fixed, and you can't move it out, so it's really hard to see what you're filming sometimes. And you'll notice some of these shots, Kaylee isn't in the center, or it's a little out of focus, and that's because as I was moving, I wasn't able to look at the screen to make sure the focus was proper. Finally, we have the G7X Mark II, and I think for shots like this, the G7X really doesn't do anything very well. You can see the image quality isn't very good, the stabilization isn't very good, it only films in 60 frames a second, so everything's really shaky. And making any changes, like changing the focus, or the f-stop, or the ISO, is really difficult in this camera. 
So while this camera does have a place as a traditional vlog camera, I think for cinematic shots, this isn't the camera that you want. So after quality, the next most important thing to us is sound. So to us, sound is very important, especially with what we do, because we're outside a lot of the times, like we are today, we're on the beach. So it's very important to have a good microphone in those circumstances. So there's two types of microphones that you can have, either an external one or one that's built into the camera. So this is what we use. This is a Rode VideoMic Pro and it works pretty good. Yeah. You can hear right now, like we're at the beach, it's pretty windy. And then the second kind of microphone is one that's built into the camera already, like an iPhone or like the G7X. So the microphone on it is right here on the top. So to give you an example of a difference between the two, this sound is coming from the Rode VideoMic Pro and this sound is coming from the G7X. So when you're doing something like vlogging, sound is really, really important. And if you're thinking about it, sometimes it's almost more important than the picture itself. Think about when you, think about when there's been a really bad sound for something you're watching, like a high screech or with wind blowing in the microphone. It's almost too bearable to even watch or listen to, and it's like you can't even stand it and you have to turn it off. But if the image quality is lacking a little bit, it's not all that bad. If the sound sounds good, you can get by with lesser quality. So when we're doing our camera shopping, we always make sure that we buy a camera that has one of these external mic um, slots. So basically what that is, is you can plug in an external microphone in there and that allows you to choose any external microphone that you want to ensure that your sound quality is going to be so the third most important thing for a travel camera, in our opinion, is the front facing screen. So as you can see here, we have the screen flipped towards us so we can actually see what's going on. Because in certain cases when we didn't have that, we'd be either like super zoomed in on our face or half of our face cut off and not knowing what's going on. So when you have that screen flipped forward, you can see what's happening, um, especially for, for vloggers, that's really, really important. So the front facing screen doesn't really matter if you're not gonna be vlogging. If you're just doing travel stuff and you wanna be doing landscapes, or if you wanna set up all your shots, maybe for traveling around the city, then the front facing screen really doesn't matter. You can set the camera up, set all the settings, set the focus and get your shot. But when you can see the screen, you can see what you're shooting. It helps with kind of like the run and gun style of vlogging, or if you want to point the camera at you at all, it's definitely necessary. So the fourth most important thing to us is the autofocus. So with this camera here, the Lumix Street H5, the autofocus is not the it's greatest. It's poopy. It's not the greatest. It's really bad. So when I zoom in right on Jordan, uh, Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. There it oh. is. Oh. <laughs> so it takes quite a long time for it to autofocus. And we want it to be like instantaneous for vlogging. Right, exactly. Because when you're going back and forth like this, you want it to, to immediately focus on the other person's face. So now with the Canon M50, when I turn the camera to focus on Jordan, it Instant. focuses immediately. Immediately. So that is really what you want when you are vlogging, especially when you're vlogging with other people. Um, or if you're just like focusing on something that you're showing the, the people on the camera, so. And personally, I love Canon the most for the autofocus because they use something called dual pixel autofocus and it works really, really well. Mm. And the Lumix, the, it's by Panasonic, uses a contrast to try to find the focus and it doesn't right. work as well. Right. So for autofocus, I love Canon across the board. So the last and final feature would be the size. So whether it's compact or not compact. Size um, matters. Size matters for sure. Size <laughs> matters. So here's all of our cameras so you can see for yourself. This one right here is obviously the biggest. This is the 5D. Then next we have the Lumix, then the Canon M50, then the G7X Mark II, and then the iPhone is the smallest. The really good thing about the iPhone and the G7X is you can take it and you can just slip them right in your pocket. Do you want to pick a camera that if you had to pick one to go with for vlogging yeah. and cinematography, like if you had just had to pick one, what would be the camera that you would pick? Mm. See, I love our Canon M50, but after playing with her Canon G7X and after her telling us the features that are on there that are very similar to her 5D, I may have to go with the Canon G7X. What about, what about you? If it was up to me, I would pick this camera, the Canon M50. I like the features that's on it. I like that you can film in 120 frames a second, which allows you to do montages. It allows you to film in slow-mo. So on the low end, I picked the Canon M50. If I was going to go a little bit of a step up, I'd pick a camera that we actually don't have. I'd pick the Canon 60 Mark II. You can go check it out. I'll put a link to it in the description. That camera costs about $1,200, so it's more than this one. And it just gives you a little bit more versatility, and it's a full-frame camera so you get a much bigger picture. But now we're flipping over to the photo portion 
Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so we just finished up a little shoot with Kaylee and Jordan. I'm just in their bus and we compared all the quality of all the cameras um, in their camera mode. And for me, my top pick would be the Canon 5D Mark III. And the reason for that is how versatile it is. So you can put any lens on this, um, that's a Canon or a Sigma um, or anything that fits the Canon. And you can change all the different settings. So the most important thing for me is to have a low f-stop, meaning that you can let in a ton of light. So when we're in a situation like this where there's not a whole ton of light, um, you can actually get really solid pictures. So the two cameras that we use, the GH5 and the M50, are both crop sensors. So that means that our picture is a lot smaller. So where this border is right here, if we're using a full frame, it would be 20% more that way, which would be able to show you a lot more. For photos, it's really important. For video, not so much. That's why we go with a crop sensor, because the cameras generally are cheaper. For my larger Canon 5D Mark III, you can actually put different lenses on it versus this little guy that just kind of has the same lens on it. The lens that I currently have on my 5D Mark III is actually about double the cost of this little guy right here. And the reason that it's that expensive is because it has such nice glass on it, which basically means that it can get a lot lower of an f-stop, which means you'll have a lot more bokeh. Bokeh is essentially the amount of blurriness that's behind you. So if you have a lower f-stop, that means you're gonna have less in focus versus if you have a larger f-stop, they'll be more in focus. So we are currently on our way to an area called the Douglas Natural Preserve, I think. Yeah. Um, and it's right in, it's right outside of Santa Barbara and it's right on like the cliffside coastline. Lola's going crazy, there's some other dogs here. I'm alumni. <laughs> so we're gonna go get some really beautiful photos and then show you guys the differences between them all. Well guys, that's a wrap. Photo shoot is all done. How do you think it went? Oh, I'm so excited. Kendall, <laughs> best models of all time? Uh, no. For sure. Yes. Right. Such cuties. <laughs> so just to wrap up the whole camera portion, I guess we should say if we were gonna choose one camera to be a travel photo camera Ooh. out of the group, which one would you choose? Kendall, do you want to answer it first? Yeah. I would say, honestly, the iPhone. The iPhone? Yeah, because you always have it on you, and it's really easy if you edit, if you know how to edit well, yeah. you can get the best photos using an iPhone. I thought you were going to say the G7X Mark II. No. Really? Mm -hmm. I was also going to say the iPhone. I think it's super easy. You can just pull it out of your pocket. It's all automatic. You don't need to set any settings. You just totally. take it. And I feel it. like a lot of the times, like when we take photos with the iPhone, like I don't even know the difference whether it was taken with an iPhone or like a really nice camera. Yeah. Especially the iPhone 10. Yeah. So the iPhone, great photo camera. The G7X, an awesome vlogging camera. And then if you're gonna get a cinema camera, I like the M50 if you wanna do some cinematic stuff. Yeah. So those are kind of our three like entry level photography, vlogging, and cinematography cameras. Totally. If you want something that's all around for photo and video, I would go ahead and get the brand new Canon 60 Mark II. It has a touch screen, which means you don't have to constantly have it in your face. You can hold it up and get up angles and touch it and do focal. Um, it has a really great quality, just like my big camera does. Um, and also it's amazing for video. So I'd probably pick that up. Yeah, that's the one that we talked about for video. So we'll link all these cameras down below if you guys want to check them out, including the 60. So I think this is where we're gonna call it a day. Kindle is already passed out over there. She's not as asleep as we think she is. She just woke up. She was passed out, <laughs> but then she woke up. We gotta bring her into the airport for like 7.30 in the morning, so we gotta get some Z's on. If you guys have any questions about cameras, feel free to leave them down in the comments. We tried to get as much info in this video as possible, and mm -hmm. it's super hard to do within 10 minutes. Yeah, I feel like on each subject, we could have gone into detail even more. And done a whole video on each subject. Right, but we wanted to keep it as simple as we could and as straightforward as we could. So 
we hope you guys gained a little something from that. And again, like George said, any questions, Hit leave us that up. shit below. We love you guys. We'll, we'll see, see you next time. time. Oh, <laughs> bye. Peace out.